Hello boys and girls. Happy Read Across America Week. This is one of my favorite weeks of the year. Do you know why it's my favorite week of the year? Because reading is one of my favorite things. When we read, we can go on adventures. We can go anywhere we want to go. You can go to the beach. You can go to the zoo. You can go to the circus. Some books. You can even go to Walt Disney World. That's pretty fantastic. And you can do all of that while sitting on your couch or your bed or in your desk at school. You can meet all kinds of new and exciting and silly people. Reading is the best adventure. Would you take an adventure with me today? Let's take an adventure in a Dr. Seuss book. This one is one of my favorites. This book is the very first book I ever read during Read Across America Week. It's Hooray for Diff and Doofer Day. And let's see what we can, what kind of adventure we can go on with this book. Hooray for Diff and Doofer Day. This was written by Dr. Seuss, but he started writing it and then he passed away. So he had a little help writing this book from Jack Prolutsky and Lane Smith. I've always lived in Dinkerville. My friends all live here too. We go to Diff and Do for school. We're happy that we do. Our school is at the corner of Dink Zuber and Dink Zot. It looks like any other school, but we suspect it's not. I think we're learning lots of things not taught at other schools. Our teachers are remarkable. They make up their own rules. Do your teachers make up their own rules? I bet they do. Miss Bobble teaches listening. Miss Wobble teaches smelling. Miss Fribble teaches laughing. And Miss Quibble teaches yelling. Miss Twinning teaches tying knots in neckerchiefs and noodles. And how to tell chrysanthemums from miniature poodles. Miss Vining teaches all the ways a pigeon may be peppered. And how to put a saddle on a lizard or a leopard. My teacher is Miss Bonkers. She's as bouncy as a flea. I'm not certain what she teaches, but I'm glad she teaches me. Look, look, she chirps. I'll show you how to tell a cactus from a cow, and then I shall instruct you why a hippo cannot hope to fly. Can you tell a cactus from a cow? I think I could. She even teaches frogs to dance and pigs to put on underpants. One day, she taught a duck to sing. Miss Bonkers teaches everything. Of all the teachers in our school, I like Miss Bonkers best. Our teachers are all different, but she's differenter than the rest. We also have a principal. His name is Mr. Lowe. He is the very saddest man that any of us know. He mumbles, are they learning this and that and such and such? His face is wrinkled as a prune from worrying so much. He breaks a lot of pencil points from pushing down too hard and many dogs start barking as he mopes around the yard. We think he wears false eyebrows. In fact, we're sure it's so. We've heard he takes them off at night. I guess we'll never know. But we know he likes Miss Bonkers. He treats her like a queen. He's always there to watch her when she's on her trampoline. Our music teacher, Mrs. Fox, makes bagpipes out of straws and socks. Our art instructor, Mr. Bees, paints pictures hanging by his knees. 
Have you ever tried to paint a picture while hanging by your knees? We have three cooks, all named McMunch, who merrily prepare our lunch. They make us hot dogs, beans, and fries, plus things that we do not recognize. And as they cook, they sing their song, not too short and not too long. Roast and toast and slice and dice, cooking lunch is oh so nice. We were eating their concoctions, telling jokes and making noise, when Mr. Lowe appeared and howled, Attention, girls and boys! He began to fuss and fidget, scratch and mutter, sneeze and cough. He shook his head so hard, we thought his eyebrows would come off. He wrung his hands, he cleared his throat, he shed a single tear, then sobbed, I've something to announce, and that is why I'm here. All schools for miles and miles around must take a special test to see who's learning such and such, to see which school's the best. If our small school does not do well, then it will be torn down, and you will have to go to school in dreary Flobber Town. Not Flobber Town, we shouted as we shuddered at the name. For everyone in Flobber Town does everything the same. It's miserable in Flobber Town. They dress in just one style. They sing one song. They never dance. They march in single file. They do not have a playground and they do not have a park. Their lunches have no taste at all. Their dogs are scared to bark. I have never met a dog who was scared to bark. That must be a sad tale. Miss Bonkers rose. Don't fret, she said. You've learned the things you need. To pass that test and many more, I'm certain you'll succeed. We've taught you that the earth is round, that red and white make pink, and something else that matters more. We've taught you how to think. I hope you're right, sighed Mr. Lowe. He shed another tear. The test is in ten minutes and you're taking it right here. We sat in shock and disbelief. Oh no, we moaned, oh no. We were even more unhappy than unhappy Mr. Lowe. But then the test was handed out. Yahoo, we yelled, Yahoo! For it was filled with all the things that we all knew we knew. There were questions about noodles, about poodles, frogs, and yelling about listening and laughing and chrysanthemums and smelling. There were questions about other things we'd never seen or heard, and yet somehow we answered them enjoying every word. One week later, after recess, Mr. Lowe meandered in. We'd never seen him smile before, but now he wore a grin. He soon began to giggle. Then his giggle grew by half. And then it really happened. Mr. Lowe began to laugh. You've saved our school. You've saved our school, he jubilantly roared. We got the very highest score. He wrote it on the board. Miss Bonkers did some cartwheels till her face turned cherry red. She bounded up to Mr. Lowe and kissed him on the head. Hooray, hooray, she shouted. I'm so proud I cannot speak. She did another cartwheel. Then she pecked him on the cheek. That is so silly. <clears throat> coughed Mr. Lowe. You all deserve a bow. I thus declare a holiday. It starts exactly now. Because you've done so splendidly in every sort of way, 
this day forever shall be known as Diff and Doofer Day. And furthermore, I promise I won't ever wear a frown. For I, for now I know we'll never go to dreary Flobber Town. Then we held a celebration. There was pizza, milk, and cake. Like everyone, I ate too much and got a belly ache. We laughed and whooped and hollered the entire school day long. Then we all sang triumphantly the Diff and Doofer song. We love you, Diff and Doofer School. We definitely do. There surely is no other school that's anything like you. You're gribulous, you're grobulous. Each day we love you more. You are the school we treasure and unceasingly adore. Oh, finest school in Dinkerville, the only one as well. We love you, Diff and Doofer School, much more than we can tell. You are so Diff and Dooferous, it gives us joy to say, three cheers for Diff and Doofer School. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Something tells me that your school is just as awesome as Diff and Doofer. And I hope you have a diff and doofus day. Happy Read Across America Week, boys and girls, and happy birthday, Dr. Seuss.